there is something that must be said, a truth that must be spoken, because the hour is drawing late in which to speak it. I'm going to talk about the one thing I was most wrong about in the last seven years. I did not believe that Hillary Clinton could conceivably lose to Donald Trump. Looking back, like millions of people, and like most every other person who worked in presidential politics, who was an analyst on television, I was wrong. I have vowed that I will never make that mistake again. And I will never, ever suppress my doubt and refuse to speak it out loud out of fear of being yelled at on Twitter by someone in Washington, D.C. I am not afraid to speak the truth. And here it is. The extremist movement in America is hotter, better funded, and more dangerous than it was on January 6th, 2021. Donald Trump is deranged. He is facing 92 felony counts. He is the greatest threat to American liberty and freedom since the Confederate States of America. Yet, he is winning the presidential election. And there is no time left to not talk about this. He is beating President Biden badly. We live in a two-party country. It's a two-team sports league. It's the Democrats versus the MAGA Republicans. And I have a question for all of the geniuses in Washington, D.C., sitting around the table at the Democratic National Committee. How can it be that President Biden is losing to Donald Trump? Let's put the issue on the table. President Biden has clearly demonstrated a capacity to govern while simultaneously demonstrating an absolute incapacity to deal with the deluge of lies, bombast, and insanity directed at his way. The Biden political team has failed utterly in the most important mission of the Biden presidency, which was to put out the fire of MAGA extremism and return a sense of normalcy to the country. The president has many accomplishments. Some of them are utterly historic. Joe Biden will be remembered in the same breath as Dwight Eisenhower when it comes to the historic legacy of building the infrastructure of tomorrow. In the same way that Dwight Eisenhower built America's infrastructure in the last half of the 20th century, Joe Biden has built it in the first half of the 21st century. Yet the single failure that matters most is the failure to snuff out Trumpism. Here's why. It didn't happen. It didn't happen because of cynicism. It was the calculus of the Biden White House that they want Donald Trump to be the Republican nominee under the belief that Donald Trump is the easiest opponent for President Biden to defeat. But that is wrong-headed thinking. Donald Trump is the gravest threat facing the country in 158 years. The idea that he should be drawn forward, that he should be wished for, that he should be hoped for as the nominee of one of the two major parties and thus be one step away from returning to the White House is as deeply irresponsible, cynical, and dumb as a belief, a wish, or a strategy could be. It is reckless beyond measure, but it is the fundamental strategy of President Biden's campaign under the delusion that Donald Trump can only be beaten 
by Joe Biden, when in fact, what every single poll taken in America over the last year has demonstrated is this. President Biden may literally be the only member of the Democratic Party who could conceivably lose an election to Donald Trump. That's what the polls say. They say the American people don't want the 82-year-old president to run for re-election and to serve until just shy of his 87th birthday, well into the third decade of the 21st century, given that he was first elected in 1972 when I was two years old. There's nothing wrong with this view. What's wrong is the anger, the rage, the effrontery of the power class in Washington, D.C., reacting to the notion, to the idea of challenge in America in 2023. They don't want democracy. They don't want choice. What the power class in Washington of both parties wants is power permanently, without question, by demand, not by election. And the result of all of that is the situation we're seeing develop. Our commitment as a people in the country to freedom, to dissent, to tolerance, to the defense of the American Constitution is rapidly declining. And the result will be catastrophe for us, for our children, for our country, and for our future.